All right. We're almost ready to start. If you're joining us, welcome. We'll be getting going in just a minute. And if you're just joining us, feel free to drop in the chat where you're joining us from. And uh, if you feel comfortable, you can also share why you're joining the session. So if there's just general concern about your role or your job, as well as if you've been laid off, we also want to know that just to see who's in the room. All right. Okay. Uh, let me see. My moderator is having trouble getting on stage. with her right now hello and welcome drop in the chat say hi where are you joining us from i'm lisa kostova i'll be the host of this workshop i'd love to see who's in the room i'd love to hear if you've experienced layoffs or if you're just here to prevent that from happening and make sure you're you're in a good place so drop in the chat for that and uh we'll get going here shortly Going to a second. All right. Nice. Okay. Have a couple of people going. Nivedita, did you figure out how to request to be added to the stage? I think it should be a button somewhere. You might as well just try to share uh, video and audio. Just so I can bring you to the stage and get your you introduced as we get more people joining. Yay! Awesome. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Why don't we keep you here for the next couple of minutes while more people join and then we're gonna get going. So for those of you who've already joined us, welcome, welcome, welcome. I wanna see in the chat, just say hi in the chat. Introduce yourself, where are you joining from, and uh, I want to just hear if you're here to learn how to navigate this uncertain time or if, you're, if you've already experienced layoffs or something that is causing you to want to plan, want to get in, in the action. So yeah, I'd love to hear that. We have a few more people joining us. Great. Nivedita, how's it going? You in the Bay Area today? Yes, I am. And then as soon as you say go, I see there is seven, eight, and then I can start introducing you. Oh, that's that's fun. Hey, um, so listen, before you introduce me, and I have a slide with a little bit of the bullet points. Um, oh, hi, Brianna. Great to see you here from St. Paul, Minnesota, Twin Cities. Love it. Um Yes, prepare best for downturns. We're going to talk a lot about that. Nivedita and I have been around the block <laughs> with several recessions and several downturns. And I personally looked for jobs in both of these, <laughs> both of the last two recessions. So plenty of experience to speak from. And uh, Nivedita is my moderator. Nivedita Oja is the VP of product at Fort Robotics. Prior to that, she has been a senior product person, um, you know, VP of product and held other senior roles at companies like Citrix, uh, Autodesk, and many others. She has also been a founder of a startup. Super, super action-oriented, very driven woman. Uh, I love having her as a coaching client. She's fantastic. And um, she also has a lot of experience changing uh, during, you know, tough times, during recessions, during um, economic downturns. So I'm super excited to have her moderate the session and also contribute as we go through as we go through the plan here and make sure that you're ready to actually construct your plan here with us. We're going to go super, super fast, but there's going to be an opportunity and I'll make you an invitation. There's going to be an opportunity to actually follow up and um, sign up for a live challenge I'm doing next week, which is free to drill down on this deeper. All right. So let us 
wait for the top of the hour, just a second. Nivrita, what is, um, what is your, let me see, what kind of, oh, what is the little known fact about you? Little oh. known fact about me? Yeah, a little icebreaker. Okay. Um, yeah, actually, I started my first career in this country as a radio jockey. Really? I did not know that. Yeah, and it was, if you ask me, technology or radio jockey, I would say radio jockey. <laughs> was it on, on the radio? So you were actually I mixing was, songs? I was and mixing stuff? songs. I was uh, hosting this international music program in the university uh, at Michigan. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I used to get to play international music from everywhere in the world. And it was every Sunday morning. Sometimes I made goofs and errors, which were significant. And then I had to be on live. I had to figure out, I'll, you know, while people are still joining one story. I, I, there's a famous song and I made a mistake in saying that name of the song. And I put in another song, actually. And then instantly everybody was phoning the station. And I was like, oh, I was just checking if everybody was awake or no. Oh my gosh. That's such a wonderful experience. And this is exactly how, this is the exactly the attitude. And welcome to everybody. I think we have a full room here. So um, unless you drop out, you won't be able to. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's allowing us. I think it's allowing 17? us to have more. Yes. Yeah. I know it's. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, we have uh, we have a full room. So let's get going. Oh, Sufda, great to see you here. Sufda is another member of our Career Climb community uh, with uh, Nivedita here. And I'm going to reintroduce Nivedita real quick. Nivedita uh, is an executive coaching client of mine, and she is uh, the VP of product at Ford Robotics. Nivedita has a lot of experience dealing with both hardware and software, which she does right now in her capacity as VP of product. And in the past, she's held senior roles, including VP of product roles at places like Citrix, Autodesk. And she's also been the founder of her own startup and a radio jockey, like we found out right now, like, a, uh, you know, <laughs> a DJ. So that's great that she's, I'm seeing for me. And uh, let's let's get going. So you can see the slide. I'm going to run through this relatively I introduce quickly. You quickly. Yeah, Lisa. I know. Here, here we go. The song is yeah. queued up. <laughs> okay. So Lisa, as you know, she's a very well reputed um, coach for especially for mid career women, and she hosts the Product VP Challenge. Something that I took and actually got to know her and really enjoyed the direction in which she was leading my career. And uh, one of the best thing about her is she's an avid skier, climber, and the big one is mountaineering. And that's where I kind of connected with her because I'm a long distance cyclist. And there is this whole focus and preparation that needs to go for both of these. And she has summited the Denali in 2019. And I see her in many ways, kind of uh, her career repeats my career. So there's a lot of learning. So I'm hoping all of you will learn a lot from Lisa today. I love it. Awesome. So I'm just going to like kind of go through this. And this was covered by, by Nivedita already. Um, I'm really passionate about building community and career women. Our community has grown to over 100 women, some of whom are here in the um, room in the chat. So fantastic to see you. Uh, again, you know, this has been my passion tech, building products in tech and supporting women and coaching women in tech is a huge passion of mine. Uh, again, I've kind of been in books. I've been in the Harvard Business Review. I speak several languages, like Nivedita said, Samantha Denali. My biggest passion, my next mountain is um, this. It's it's building a company and community uh, of women who keep uh upping their game and keep supporting each other. And I am, you know, I'd be honored to support you and be with you on your journey. I also, as Nivedita said, uh, you know, I had the experience of graduating right in the midst of the last two recessions, <laughs> uh, undergrad and then grad. And I actually had the experience of being part of the uh, class of Harvard Business School that had the lowest percentage of job offers. And some of my classmates were in the same boat as me. We graduated without jobs and we just took off because so many of us joined companies that ended up 
in hyper growth mode. I joined Zynga when it was still a couple hundred people, super scrappy. Uh, some of my classmates started companies you may have heard of, like Cloudflare, Rent the Runway, um, ThreadUp. Uh, they're still going and successful. And some have joined, including I have an investor in Career Climb who's who joined uh, one of the earliest venture capital funds in China and then became a huge partner and has a huge fund now working with a lot of the Chinese entrepreneurs. So uh, again, super excited for this year, the year that a lot of things are getting changed. A lot of, of you know, old ways are being uh, ways of you know doing work in tech are, are are coming to an end, and a new wave of opportunity is upon us. So there is something super exciting about this time that I want to share with you, and I want you to come away from this presentation uh, really excited, really fired up, and really jazzed up uh, because. This is a unique time and the window of opportunity is narrow. So you got to jump in right now. It's going to be scary, but just like the penguins getting off of the cliff, you know, jumping off the cliff in the ocean, you got to go. So let us, oh, and before, before we start going down the path here, I do want to invite you to a deep dive on what we talk about here today with lots of examples and the chance to kind of construct an in-depth plan with me. I want to invite you to a recession proof your career challenge. I'm running a challenge. I love running challenges. Nivedita talked about the product PP challenge where she met me. And you can uh, sign up for free. Uh, the uh, the URL is again www.it's not gonna work. So just type in the recession challenge.co. The recession challenge.co, uh, put in your email address and then we'll send you all the information about how to attend the challenge calls there will be recordings so um we'd love to see you there and again it's super free uh it's entirely free and it's super exciting live we're gonna have a lot of fun so first we're gonna dive into the three dimensions of career security and as we go through these uh nivedita and i will be prompting you to put some answers in the chat so be uh, ready, be ready to participate and um, and really be proactive and and be ready to take action. That's the mindset. I don't want you like if you're multitasking right now, that's fine, but know that you're missing out on an opportunity to really kind of zoom in, be hundred percent focus hundred percent with us and make some decisions that you may have been kicking down the road or avoiding, or ask some questions that need to be asked that you've been post procrastinating on. So please come back here mentally, everybody, you know, you can connect on LinkedIn with everybody on, you know, in the group in the conference in like 20 minutes or half an hour, just come back to us right now, be present, we're about to take a very focused tour. Uh, so let's go. So the first thing I mentioned that I want to talk about is proximity to revenue. And what that means is there are functions, and we're going to talk specifically about functions here, um, although there are other you know, ways to be close to revenue. Like every company, every company has you know, certain functions that are core to the revenue. However, the company gets their revenue, whether it's a B2C um, or a B2B company, that's going to be very, very different. So for example, and I'd love to hear your perspective, Nivedit, as well, in a B2C company, uh, that means you're running an app or there's a product that's being bought by consumers. It's probably either a subscription or a lower cost product. That means you got to be close to building that product. So engineering product, everything that has to do with kind of maintaining and um, and and running that product. Um, the other um, functions that are going to be important here to the extent that they're embedded in the company are lead generation, uh, the lead generation part of marketing. If SEO is a big deal, like how do you get actually traffic of people? How do you 
capture and convert leads. So whoever's doing that, whether it's growth, whether it's marketing, whether it's product, that's going to be a core function as well. In a B2B company, um, if the market, the underlying market of products and services is going well, that means And there's examples like that. So, for example, we have a a woman in our community who is a a CPO at a renewables company. And she is saying, wow, companies now are recycling more. So they're not going to go and buy new equipment. They're going to go and, you know, use what they have. And so their revenues are going up and their sales team is booming. So if you are in a B2B context where the underlying market is benefiting from the recession or from the slowdown, then um, sales is also a very great part or a, an important set center of power. Um, things that are most at risk in terms of functions are obvious ones. Those are the ones that are super critical when the company is growing and really don't have uh, much work when it's not growing. I'm talking about recruiting, obviously. That's, that's the top one some aspects of HR, um, you know, any type of kind of um, high cost marketing, like event planning or a lot of like content generation. So anything that doesn't directly tie down to, you know, if we get rid of this function, is our revenue going to go down, is going to be the first to be at risk. Um, if you did, I see a lot of uh, action in the chat. Uh, are there any questions or comments? No, most of them were trying to get to the uh, recessionchallenge.co. And uh, I think probably some typing error that I made. Oh. I mean, I think people have been able to go. The backslash worked better. Okay. The recessionchallenge.co. Let me try it. Yeah. So that's um, the thing. And as Lisa is trying, just I will add to what she said. Another place where revenue really has been very, very important is be connected with the data. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's super critical that you have access to the data to make good decisions. And so when you make a decision of any type, you know, whether it is cutting costs, whether it is a decision to grow the uh, application or or the product, um, any data that increases uh, the visibility of the product increases adoption, even if it is freemium. You, you know, the data, uh, being close to the data is also another place that will keep you recession proof as part of, um, you know, this, um, you know, making sure you're close to the re- revenue. Uh, that is a great point, Nivedita. And I just texted someone on my team to take a look at the opt-in link because it was working yesterday. But I should have checked because um, I just sent an email to my email list and usually there's a lot of signups and I didn't see that many signups this morning. So it could have been broken. But anyway, the link is um, for sure the recessionchallenge.co will fix it. So write it down somewhere, copy and paste it, put it on your calendar to make sure you sign up this afternoon. We have one question. Not every product manager gets to work on revenue generating products. Do you have advice on how to take on Initiative closer to yeah. great, great question. That's part of the plan. We'll cover that. Uh, so stay put. This is another uh, another dimension of, of um, proximity to revenue. All right. The next dimension is your company's or your product's market dynamics. So especially when fundamental shifts are happening, uh, there was an article recently about um, the companies that are most at risk, whose business models are most at risk with new, with the new generative AI developments. And one of them was this education company in the Bay Area called Chegg. And there was an article that made fun of Chegg wanting to um, kind of revamp and reply to the rise of AI by la- launching this product called Chegmate which they made fun of because their core product is connecting you to experts and finding, you know, essentially what chat GPT can outsource they were doing on the educational side. And so uh, look at the company's core product and the company's core market. Like if you were, are you, 
is it is it the equivalent of the gas lamp well when electricity showed up or the horse buggy when the car when the automobile was invented uh, or does your uh, company's product and market um, is it is it solid is it going to keep going is there going to be demand for that product is the market going to be um, going to continue to grow not everything is. Um, some things are, um, and then some, 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 some industries that are super saturated uh, will continue, but perhaps the number of companies will dwindle. So is your company well positioned within the market? Um, and, and don't take the party line for an answer here. You really have to understand what is going on and, you know, how is, does your product um, compared to the competition, um, is it growing? Uh, who is the buyer? Is the buyer going to be around? Is it, you know, are they using your product because there's nothing better, or are they using your product because um, they've been kind of locked in in a long term contract, but they have no choice? What is going to happen over the long term? So really understanding the company and the product market dynamics is going to go a long, long way here. Nibadita, did you have, um, do you have a comment around that? Yeah, actually for me, what I found that um, always finding yourself getting in place with others that you can align with. And uh, it's, you know, even in this scenario, collaboration for a PM is super critical because you work with so many folks, so you need to collaborate, doesn't matter who that role is. So make yourself also like somebody who is the main uh, hub and spoke, who brings in everybody together. So even in a situation like this, you are the one mediating and you set yourself apart. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. <sighs> I'm sorry. I was just trying to do the next, uh, another. uh, Okay. Uh, We'll fix the link. Um, (laughs) Let's keep going here. The third dimension is core product versus experimental new products. So in large companies, this is not so much in startups, but even in medium uh, and especially in large companies, there are lots of, of projects going around, especially as the company grows. And over the last several years, there's been a lot of capital available and large companies have poured, have just kind of placed a lot of stakes. So if you manage, if you imagine a casino and and lots of people placing bets, um, all of a sudden, lots of companies had lots of chips. And so they went around and threw them all over the place. They placed bets on everything. And so the question is now that some of these chips need to be taken off the table, Mm -hmm. is your chip that you're working on going to be taken off the table or um, is it not? And at times like these, it is a good idea. So if the company has been around for a while, if it's going to survive the recession, which a lot of the big companies will, like, yeah, where are you relative to the core product versus are you working on stuff that's going to get cut because it was new and experimental? So over here, Lisa, can I say, because this was really my personal experience, I was building something which had just taken off. The traction was really good. We closed an M&A also, and it wasn't very large, but still it got canned, okay? And we were impacted. Uh, It was uh, actually, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise because another company was looking for somebody like us. And we got the, actually I could take the whole team and go. So it, it was not hard. So finding a, even in your core, in your new product, if you can position yourself with a value that is new and upcoming, it makes a big difference. And another piece I would like to say is that um, being a product manager, try to get the design to be under you. The value that I sold was based on, actually, it was just a Figma design. Mm. It was when everything was fully completed. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes it turns out in blessing in disguise. Um, you know, this is the, this is the key, the, the name of the game here. Blessing in disguise, turning lemons into lemonade, however you want to look at it. You know, this is 
this is the important, it's the mindset shift is, can you, when everybody else has the, I call it the FUD, I actually stole that from uh, my first ever executive coach, Alessandra, she calls it, oh, there's a lot of FUD in the marketplace now. It stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when there's a lot of FUD in the marketplace, you want to have the courage, you want to have the um, appetite to be contrarian. Yeah. And so that is, that is why um, I love this, this example that anybody gave. Okay. So let's actually start delving into the seven action steps to recession proofing your career. The first action step is to assess and evaluate the trajectory of your company, the market and the product. So you need to be able to assess this dispassionately. Uh, And what I mean dispassionately is you got to stop drinking the Kool-Aid, understand that a lot of the founders, especially even in smaller companies, they're going to be like, um, they're going to be huge, huge advocates. They're going to see, this is almost the definition of a founder. They have to always, always see the positive. They always have to look at things through rose colored glasses So you just have to pull back and ask yourself, okay, um, what is really going on here? Be aware of the fallacy of the sunk cost, which is a very common human blind spot, which is on display in the stock market. People uh, tend to hold on to investments when they're decreasing in value because they don't want to realize the loss, they have this hope that somehow it'll get turned around and it will go back up. But they're very quick to sell investments that are uh, appreciating in value, even though they're more likely to keep going up. So the fallacy of the sunk cost, oftentimes we are afraid to be honest with ourselves and what's really going on until it's too late, until we don't have a choice, until this, the writing that we saw on the wall has turned into reality. And time is of the essence here. Like if you're seeing the writing on the wall and it's very clear to you that even if the company has a, a little bit more cash left to go, like it's not going to be, it's not going to be an easy, you know, road or it's not going to be, or perhaps, you know, you're in a, in the crypto market, like who knows when Web 3.0 crypto is going to turn around and if it's going to turn around. Maybe you're in uh, one of the companies that got tons of funding around post-pandemic that is around online collaboration and that placed the bet on the fact that everybody was going to stay remote, right? So do you still want to keep betting on that? Or do you want to say, hey, Lots of stuff is shifting right now. There's tons of opportunities being created. Now is the time to really um, plan and execute my 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 move, because if I stay on the sinking ship, eventually it's going to sink, and the timing may be worse when it does. Right. So you want to be very very dispassionate. Look at it almost like an investor, which you are, because you're investing your biggest wealth generating. Um, uh, you know, the, your biggest um, piece of wealth in this company, which is your time, right? So you need to position yourself where you want to be in five years, not in five months, super, super important. Um, and this is, I've, I've talked to a couple of people who had plans to do this. And I, I tried really hard to talk them out of this, especially when they have family responsibilities or, you know, they're just looking for the safety and security. Um, Right now, a lot of the kind of bigger industries, the slower moving industries like, you know, healthcare in terms of health insurance companies, some of the huge, huge financial organizations, they're looking at the tech market and saying, hey, we can pick up some tech workers on the cheap here. We haven't been able to compete because tech salaries and, you know, the, the, the perspectives in those companies were vastly more attractive to these workers, but now we can pick them up on the cheap. And so there are a couple of people that I've spoken to that have said, hey, I really want to be in a growth company. I really want to be in a startup. But you know what? Right now, I think I'm going to go work at an insurance company for a couple of years and collect my paycheck and then come back. The question I have for them and for you, if you're considering this, is like there might not be any coming back because 
think of it from the perspective of when the talent market, uh, when you know the market becomes strong again for candidates, and it will, it's cyclical. Do you think they're going to take somebody who spent the last couple of years at an insurance company if they are uh, looking to hire for their high growth startup? So very, very important to understand that you there's some decisions that you're going to make now. They're going to have long-term consequences and may not be able to be reversed. Nivedita, any comments around that? Yeah, actually, in one case, um, after I um, the dual uh, screen smartphone uh, had to fold, I was uh, I almost took like eight months. I wouldn't call it sabbatical, but really understanding where I wanted to go. And instead of yes, the market was good. It wasn't bad, but it was more like let me go test other new technologies. And I actually did a couple couple of consulting, three or four mm -hmm. of them so that it took care of my uh, paycheck. But at the same time, I could really invest myself. And I came back actually in a much better place for myself. Yeah, fantastic. And there's a comment in the chat from Hero. I see your point, Hero, that hey, it depends on what you did at the health insurance company. And I don't want to bash health insurance companies. There's plenty of them doing very interesting things and incubating uh, interesting technology projects. However, understand that you know, when the market becomes strong again for candidates and when there's a new crop of startups and high growth companies looking to hire, they're going to have the pick of the litter. And so they're going to go and say, hey, we want uh, someone from this company, from that company, from that company. And so that will be an extra um, an extra challenge or burden for you to overcome. It's not going to work for you. It will work against you. It doesn't mean that it, you can't swing it, but like how you position yourself in the market matters. Yeah. Yes, it does. And I can give an example in, uh, I'm in robotics and I'm hiring. Yeah, the market's not good. Um, but I, especially for product management, I don't need technical skills as much I need somebody to be having the real product management skill. That is sniffing out the customer problem, finding the value, and then helping with prioritization with engineering, going and experimenting, really the new age way of doing product management, not the old uh, you know, way where you had a bomb and a hardware, you wrote a list and you become like a component manufacturer, right? And as I'm looking, I've got a very smart person from a very large automotive company. They meet some requirements, but when I am going for, I don't need that technical depth. That's only one uh, criteria for me, but I'm looking holistically that I'm almost going for a new age company robotics where somebody has been much more hands-on or much more experimental. Yeah. So it does matter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so here's your turn. I want you to either right now drop in the chat if you are having an epiphany uh, on this, but if not, do it yourself. And we're definitely going to do it together in the challenge next week. I want you to like, just as, as passionately as possible, assess the strength or the long-term viability of your company, the industry, the market, where you're currently finding yourself and your function, as well as any technology that you may be working on. I'm talking about, you know, um, whether it's Web 3.0, crypto, NFT, that one is a big question mark for me. Yeah, you know, is it going to come back? Is it going to recover? When, if, how, in what form? So if you have this sense and you want to pass it by someone, um, this is why we're doing the in-depth challenge next week. That will be a great opportunity. But really, really uh, answer those questions. Don't kick them down the road. And the question of where do you want to be in five years? So do you really want to be in the middle of all the action with, I'm a, I'm a very much of a startup slash, you know, early stage person. But if you like a structure, if you want to kind of be in an organization that gives you lots of, if you're not as impatient about getting results quickly and you like the structure and you like that type of big company feel, then great. That's what you want. But you need to be clear on all aspects, industry, market, function, technology, company size. 
because where you end up right now might be a detour that you may not be able to come back to if you're moving far away from your five-year vision. All right, so the next action step is number two is plan. What does the planning look like? So the planning uh, means identifying the skills that will position you to be in demand in five years time. Now this takes some creativity, this takes some visioning, this takes some imagination, but it is important to do. Um, again, look at the emerging market trends and try to imagine where the puck is going to be, not where the puck is. This is a Wayne Gretzky saying, I love it because you want to skate to that. You want to project where is that going to be in five years time? Where do I need to be in five years time? Identify where you can leverage existing skills. Again, this is a little bit, um, a lot of pe people need help with this. And we're going to do that together next week um, during the challenge. But really what I'm talking about is existing skills is skills that can be transferred, that can be leveraged in a different context, in the different settings. Nivedita gave some examples earlier on those. Um, and you want to find the smallest skill gap and start bridging it right away. Start closing it today. Um, How do you know when you're ready to go from product manager to senior product manager? Somebody has written. Yeah, Eva, you know, this is a... Uh, uh, this is a different question in the sense of like, how do you get ahead in your career role-wise and responsibility-wise? Uh, the short answer is here. Y nobody's going to give you the permission. You need to start operating at the more senior role before you're given that 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 title. In, and you need to demonstrate that before it is given to you. Um, but the... Um, the plan that I'm talking about here is if you're seeing something emerging like generative AI, for example, or, you know, the con the creator economy, content creation, like I'll give you an example. We have one woman in our community who's taking our current, uh, who just actually finished taking our uh, Denali Executive Accelerator. And she's been in media for a long time and she wants to have her own company in media and she wants to, you know, build her own things in media. And the part of the media that she has experience with is actually on the infrastructure side, like actually the media distribution for the network or for the uh, media company that she's working for. And we identify that she needs to get closer to the content piece because the creator economy, the content creation piece, especially with generative AI, is just going to explode. And uh, that has a lot more growth potential than staying on the infrastructure side. So she is looking now to gain experience. Her parameters are, how do I gain experience? How do I get closer to content? How do I get experience in curating um, creating content and building products that help, you know, content creators do that? How do I myself figure out content as a product, etc.? So that's more of the shift I'm talking about here. I'm not talking about like getting from one level to another. Right now is going to be a hard time for most of you to negotiate a promotion. Uh, you can position yourself to start operating at that next level, um, a conversation I've had with a client recently was that her company has a freeze on promotions for 12 months, but she wants to get to the director level. And so right now she is talking to her manager about what does she need to prove over the next 12 months so that when that uh, promotion window opens, she's positioned to out of the gate be an obvious choice for the first round of, of, of pr promotions. So we're not talking about promotion as much here as like seeing where the puck is going to be and then positioning yourself like where do I need to go next to get there? Nivedita? Um, you know, you can get in, um, in, in recession time also. Uh, again, I will uh, actually tie it back to what Lisa first said. If you are making, in a recession, actually, if you're making significant breakthroughs into the revenue, and if you're dealing with that piece of it, yes, you can get 
you know, your promotion. It's true, especially if the person above you has been laid off because they're very expensive. Yes. So now they can get, you know, a cheaper director because they'll give you the, the title, but chances are they'll say, hey, hold off on the salary increase or we'll just, you know, incrementally increase it. So that could be a cost saving option for them, which ties into one of the other action items we'll present in a second. But again, this is an idea that if you position yourself correctly, if your boss is being laid off, great opportunity to step into their shoes and position that as a cost effective way for the company to keep going. Great. So your turn on this action step is identify the technology in the market and function that you want to be in five years time. Just best, best guess based on what you know now, like, you know, where do you want to be? If things are emerging right now, do you want to be in one of those areas? Do you want to establish your expertise there? Do you want to be in the middle of the action where all the growth is going to be? And then what skills, based on what you already have, what skills will be required that you don't have yet have and how do you start acquiring them right now? So my example for um, the lady who um, is in media infrastructure, but wants to get closer to content, she gets to start creating her own content as well, like eating the dog food and understanding all the dynamics of the creator economy, the content um, of, of content pieces, right? Ideally, she gets to work, her next role will involve working directly on content, but if not, very close to content or getting some um, other, you know, roles, uh, perhaps on the side where she can get involved with that. You get to do the same based on like what your skill gap is. Um, and then ex again, what existing skills can you leverage and transfer? Action step number three is moving closer to revenue. This is exactly what Nivedita just said. Figure out the core function and the power center of your company. And then if you have an interest in that function or product area, then take proactive steps in the next several quarters to get closer to it, volunteer to help, get trained by the functional product team, especially if they've, you know, had reorgs or restructurings and you just kind of are saying, hey, um, you have a hiring freeze, you can't hire somebody, you need help, I'm going to kind of work over time and come in and help uh, with with your area if you're willing to, you know, train me or to help me understand it. And, you know, obviously eventually endorse you on LinkedIn or, or have you, but try to get close to that and get some experience. It's always easier to switch inside of a company or to do this inside of a company than trying to land that new function externally, especially in a tough market. All uh, right. Some more things on that, Lisa, I will just yeah. say, um, if you are unable to find your role, um, find somebody in finance and just say, hey, you know, I'm trying to understand how the IR, ARR works, NRR works, what is the adoption matrix you're checking, because I'm trying to build some of this. Just even getting close, getting curious is also going to help you. And then you never know what could work out. So I would say get close to somebody who's in that space and then try to show that you're implementing those same things in your product. I love it. So yeah, the questions you get to ask yourself, um, and again, I'm looking forward to actually seeing your answers uh, next week during the challenge because we got we to gotta roll here quickly. Um, is there a functional product closer to the revenue that you want to move into, right? And what creative actions can you take based on what Nivedita said as well to gain experience in that function? Creativity is the answer. Realize that everybody is in a new place, um, you know, lots of things are changing very rapidly. So don't wait for permission or don't think because it hasn't been done in the past, you can't do it. Just go and ask, make it happen. Um, you know, nothing is gonna, like the rule book is thrown out uh, because <laughs> times are changing. All right, action step number four is make yourself indispensable. This is gonna be slightly controversial, but oh well. Uh, you got to make yourself indispensable to an important milestone or project in your existing area. So just like the picture here, you got to be the piece that if we remove it, everything else will fall apart, which means that you may need to work overtime or delay a vacation. Now, I will say this, proceed with caution because you need to be wise in how you manage your energy um, and avoid burnout. Too many of you are running back-to-back -back sprints, which is not really a sustainable way to operate in tech. 
So if you're already burnt out, the strategy is not for you. But if you can move some stuff around and get in the mindset of like, you know what, the next six months are going to be a lot of hard work. Tell all your fam family and friends to clear your social calendar for six months. You're going to hunker down and really make a go of it. This isn't the case where your company's products and services are viable. They're going to survive. You know, it's just a matter of, um, it's just a matter of like cost cutting consolidation and going through that next few months or few quarters. So don't do that for a company that's sinking. Don't be on the sinking ship, ship doing that, please. I'm not advocating for this. But in the case where things are likely to pull out, to come out on the other side, I do want you to consider like, how do I just like all hands on deck? How can I be a hand on this very important deck on the most important part of the deck? So your turn is, is there an initiative that you know they need help on where you can jump and take the lead or take a lead or take a piece of it? How can you go the extra mile to make sure that you're part of the skeleton survival crew? Again, you may or may not want to be there, but if you are like, yeah, you know what? Um, I'm getting experience that's going to be valuable. It puts me on a, a trajectory to where I want to be in five years. Um, I do believe in the product or the company. I've looked at it dispassionately and actually think it's got a chance. So I'm going to do whatever it, it takes to um, to help them turn it around or them come out on the other side. One thing I'll say about attempts like this is you're going to forge some incredible relationships through this experience. The people that I'm the closest with in my career, they and I have been in the trenches on this. Uh, you know, when you're working super hard, when you're sprinting, when you're pushing, and it's a core group of people that are giving it their all, it is just like in athletics, you know, it's like, okay, all hands on deck, just go make a push for it. It really binds you to the, the people around you. So even if the outcome is not immediately positive, those relationships are going to be solid for months and years to come. And you're going to get lots of leads and invitations to go and collaborate with the same people in the future. Somebody said, I'm com contemplating moving across the country to be closer to my team, but my company's in paying for relocation. I'm wondering if this will make me more indispensable as I won't be asking for the move money. But on the other hand, with layoffs in tech, I hate to move and then find myself jobless. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is a nuanced question. Obviously, it doesn't have a right or wrong answer. You need to understand the context yeah. of how, again, all the stuff that I talked about earlier, the market <laughs> dynamics of do you have someone like, are they really, are they really uh, like, you know, what are the pros and cons and like, what are the benefits of you making a move? Making a move it's very, very, it's a very costly the decision. It's not costly just from a financial point, but it's also relocating your whole fa family. So you really need to have some confidence in executing that, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So let me talk to you more about that, Eva, uh, hopefully next week. Uh, has anybody had the, uh, the opportunity to sign up for the challenge? I don't know if my team has um, been able to fix it. Uh, Oh, um, somebody by the name Lauren Gray. Oh, Lauren, is a, Lauren is a is part of our champion. community. <laughs> okay, great. Um, hi, hi, Lauren. <laughs> okay, awesome, fantastic. Okay, so scroll up in the chat and look at the modification of the URL. Um, I'm gonna hop in real quick and um, get my name cheap confirmation code to my assistant here, um, so she can uh, fix it for real. Uh, all right, so let's go back here. Um, so well, one thing uh, I wanted to just add, um, there is never a wrong time or a right time to network. Just do it all the time. Yes, and we'll get that, that it will, we'll get to, to that point in a second. All right, so action step number five is be part of the solution. So we had somebody in our career climb community who proactively did it. She, was a she is a head of her department in a large organization. And so when the company said, okay, we need to cost cut, we may need to do some layoffs, she proactively drew up a plan that reorged her team. She moved some pieces around on her team. She consolidated some things. Um, and then she presented that. And she said, hey, 
here's what I'm going to do. And here's how much cost you're saving on my team. So leave my team alone. Don't cut anyone from my team because I've already made a plan around that. Super, super smart. That inspired me to kind of include this. Um, I haven't seen anybody do it as skillfully as she did. Very impressive. But if you have a team um, and you are seeing the, the writing on the wall, don't let somebody else make that decision for you. Go and be part of the solution. People are going to be asked to draw plans. So proactively do that. And then present your cost cutting plan and say how much you'll be saving the company. They're most likely going to, you know, go easier on you than on other managers teams who have been like deer in the headlights, what is going on. Um, so that's, that's the recommendation. Your Hi. turn. Uh, I, I did, um, I did um, something uh, when I joined this uh, Ford Robotics and we were in the, uh, you know, the market was not really doing well. I hired two contractors. Yeah. And also I limited the hours so that when the time came, I knew what to do and it was much easier and my team didn't get an impact of that. So think okay. creatively. And, you know, I think Lisa had this lovely point, creative I would say you're a product manager. That's your, that should be your first name, creativity. I love it. Uh, yeah. So how can you optimize your budget ca and calculate and most importantly, show the savings. So show up with the, look how much this plan is going to save the company. You know, let's like, let's implement it or practically go and implement it. And uh, that may or may not help your team avoid layoffs, but at least it's a huge step in the right direction. Action step number six is going on a listening slash reconnection tour. Now, I talk about a lot and I've, you know, the most popular episode of my podcast, The Female Tech Exec, is uh, your plan for 30, your first 30, 60, 90 days of the new role. Listening tours are essential. They're great for st starting a new job. They're also amazing when there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, FUD, in the workplace. One word of caution here, huge disclaimer, this doesn't mean that you're going to gossip and feed into or perpetuate speculations. This is super, um, this is super, super tempting, but you got to stay away with it. Like stay far away from the gossip mill, stay far away from speculating somebody starts talking about this, switch the, the topic, stay, um, you know, as a diplomat, as somebody who is, you know, got executive presence, stay in your power and just talk about something else. But the stuff that you want to be asking is you want to be doing a listening tour with stakeholders and you want to be asking what's on their minds, what's keeping them up at night. Um, really understanding how they see the future and what they think you know, the next step for the company should be to come out on the other side. That will really put you in a position to know what's going on and reconnect with those decision makers who are going to make the calls when the time comes. Now, one of the biggest commodities or not commodities, one of the biggest, um, most valuable things in the market right now is uh, attention. Everybody is scatterbrained. Everybody is pulled in 15 different directions. Some of you are Obviously, I, I'm sure some of you are not even on the tab right now watching this presentation and are probably on Slack or checking out, connecting with people on LinkedIn, you know, multitasking as they call it, which is scatterbraining. You're not paying attention and um, that, is going to, um, that is going to be evident afterwards when you're like, what, what was that about? What did, I, what did I take away from this? Same thing happens with conversations with people. When you're not paying attention, when you're not present, it's obvious. People don't feel heard. Now, when they see you there listening and truly taking an interest without running through your mind what you're going to say next, that's super valuable. So go on a listening reconnection tour, uh, plan to set up short catch-up calls or meetings, drop a list of people that you want to reconnect with, even if they're more senior doesn't hurt. Um, go and grab some time with them. Don't be, uh, oh, I need a, I need permission first. No, you got to go on your listening tour. And really listen, listen with curiosity and take what's on their minds and just be like a, like a wise interviewer and really show them that attention. It's going to be the biggest gift uh, to them. And carry some strategic questions because you want to present yourself as being strategic and you never know what job may end up. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, action step number seven, this is the most practical one, is make a contingency plan. So if you're assessed that there to be a risk of layoffs to you, take the next few weeks and months to just get some of the foundation going. Optimize your recruiter profile to be uh, profile to be recruiter friendly. Again, I'll talk more about that next week during the challenge. Start posting on LinkedIn regularly. This is important also for... Um, surfacing you higher in search results for recruiters. You want to start your strategic networking efforts. I teach strategic networking, which is not, you know, copy and paste a bunch of like um, generic language to reach out and connect with, with, with strangers. It has a strategic approach behind it. I don't want you applying blind to jobs. It's, you're just adding to the noise. Use the strategic networking process. Again, more on that next week. Some uh, interview practices essentially start greasing those wheels of, you know, how do you get back into interview form, practice telling your story. Again, I'll show you an onion technique, which means you have different levels of telling a story for different contexts. And then have a heart to heart conversation with your manager and assess options with their help. Like, okay, like what is really going on here? Are we on a sinking ship? You know, what is happening? But don't be panicky about it. Don't show up with the FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Show up like a dispassionate person who is thinking strategically, thinking ahead, having this conversation with your manager. Again, some other practical considerations. If you're on an H-1B visa, please save up all your paid leave days and plan to negotiate to stay on the payroll for as long as possible instead of taking the severance and getting on the short clock that the um, uh, immigration process will allow you. I've managed to negotiate that twice and um, ask for at least two months on the payroll, which whatever, however many months they're giving you of severance, ask that you stay on the payroll and keep getting those W-2 things while you're cut off from the company infrastructure. Calculate your savings and try to reduce your overhead by cutting expenses that don't directly contribute to you getting your career back on track. And that means things, um, and, and again, uh, should you get a coach? My honest, uh, my honest perspective is yes, if it contributes to, you know, getting you trained and in shape to uh, execute on your career plan faster and better. So I have a bias for that. But if you're, you know, if you're looking at other expenses that are like discretionary, then you can cut back that for a little bit. You can open a new credit card while you're still employed. So when I was moving my accounts from First Republic, where I had banked for a long time over to Chase, they just gave me a, 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 a like a new credit card with a 15-month zero uh, percent on purchases, and it just happened just now. So when they say, "Oh, credit is tight," for this demographic here of relative high earners uh, for the US and for Western the, the Western world, you should be able to get credit with 0% or low, uh, low interest transfer options. And consider a margin loan on your investment assets to tide you over. Uh, again, if you have a financial advisor, uh, speak to them about that. They're reluctant to give you that as an option because uh, they don't earn usually as high of a fee on something that's tied up in the margin loan, but uh, they'll be able to talk to you about that. So your turn is set up the contingency plan, identify the biggest risks that you need to manage around and how to plan for those, immigration status, savings, etc. All right. And... Please, like, I hope the URL will get fixed soon. It will get fixed in the next, you know, couple of minutes or an hour or so. So write down this URL and plan to uh, enroll in the challenge to where we can spend a lot more time next week do, going in depth into your specific plan to recession-proof your career. And the URL is therecessionchallenge.co. We start on Tuesday. Again, it's going to be an hour. Recordings will be available if you can't make the call lives and there'll be a small pop-up LinkedIn group around that. Awesome. Um, great. So any questions, comments, I'd love to hear from you since we just went so fast here. What are you taking away? I want to, I want to see at least one action that you're going to take as a result of our time together right now. Um, Link doesn't still work. Okay. Okay. Man Manjusha, uh, please write down the link and try again. Uh, and uh, FYI, 
just, you know, just to make sure you do take an action right now, I'm dropping my email. Uh, I'm dropping my email here. So apparently there's a backslash and that's the one that's working. Okay. 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 If the link doesn't work for you, Lisa at careerclimb.co, drop me a quick email that says, sign me up for the challenge and we follow, we'll follow up with you when the link works. Okay. I apologize for that. Um, uh, <laughs> Lauren doesn't work on her company computer. I know, I know we don't have the security yet because we're using a new CRM and it really broke a lot of the, the security pieces on us. But honestly, all we're doing is sign, signing up for you for the challenge. I'm not going to be selling your email or doing anything with it other than putting you on my email list so you can trust me <laughs> even if your browser says you can't. Um, great. Any questions, any comments, and please drop in the chat the one action item, at least one action item that you're going to take as a result of our time together? Like what's one thing that you didn't think to do that you're now going to do as a result of this? Please drop in something, something that you're going to do that you didn't plan on doing before. Come on. Come on. I want to see plans. Maybe some, uh, figure out if I can, clo I am close to the revenue, Lakshmi says. Mm -hmm. Update LinkedIn, work more on a contingency plan, setting up a listening tour, emphasize and build proximity to revenue generation, uh, update resume LinkedIn and get data, generate a list of topics to post on LinkedIn. Great. Generation. Have a look at that. Okay. All right. All right. So for a bunch of scatterbrained uh, ladies who are more multitasking, and you know what? The hop-in platform doesn't help. You have like all these things pinging at you from everywhere. You have lots of DMs. Look over here on the left. You've had like lights flashing and blinking at you. I'm sure your Slack is blowing up. Your text thread is blowing up. You're probably checking email. That's fine. I just, that's why, that's why I want you in the challenge. Please, please come because we can have the mindset, the mind space instead of like rushing to do everything all at once, we can just kind of sit down and I can bring you up on the camera. We can hot seat you. We can talk about your specific case. And that's going to be a lot more, a lot more quality time together. All right. Uh, fantastic. Be part of the solution. Cut costs. Make a five-year plan. Contingency plan. Network strategically. Uh, everything, everywhere at once. Hop and feels like that. I know. I know. I, I have lots of thoughts about how to create spaces that allow for like awareness and presence. And this is not one of them. So <laughs> <laughs> awesome ladies. Well, enjoy the rest of your conference experience. Uh, do email me if the recessionchallenge.co link did not work and just drop me an email and say, Hey, please put, put, put me on the list. We'll do it manually for you. Um, Lisa at careerclimb.co. If, like all of a sudden you're like, oh, this link, I don't, I can't get it to work. Awesome. Thanks, Thank ladies. you. See you soon. Bye. Bye.